Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video. Today's video um, is going to be all about, specifically, five units that are five stars to look forward to in the year 2021 in Fake Grand Order North America. The title of the video is probably going to be way shorter than that, um, but that's basically what the parameters for this video are. So let's get, let's get some things right off the bat. 2021. Um, the NA version of the game is two years behind of the J Japanese version, therefore we have two years knowledge of exactly what units are going to be coming this year. They're never out of order. Um, we never get earn units super early. They always keep to the schedule. So we know what five units... So I know specifically these five units are coming. Um, why specifically these five... <laughs> four, these five... Uh, five stars? Well, I pick them either because they're extremely powerful, um... They're because they're all extremely powerful, actually. <laughs> well, some of them are extremely fan are fan favorites, um, but they're also extremely powerful. And if you're someone who is specifically looking at the game from a power standpoint, they are kind of good to keep in the back burner. Maybe you're someone who doesn't 100% know how good some of these units are. Like, not everyone knows what happens in the JP version at the exact same time. Um, so I wanted to focus on these specific five five stars. Three, I specifically limited it to just five stars that are new, that are coming in 2021. Um, the 2021 lineup is actually kind of nuts when you look at it. We have like Jalter reruns, we have Bride Nero reruns, we have collab units, um, we have fan favorite units such as more soccer faces. If you love uh, King Prothea, she is coming into the game this year, along with Miyu, who is from Prisma Star Ilya, who is an extremely limited four star. Um, there's also a bunch of like one to two star units that are coming as well as some threes. Uh, Chen Gong, for example, is one of the units I'm actually super looking forward to, uh, who is a two star unit, who is basically the Arash if he sacrificed other people. Not really going to be delved into in this specific video because I want it to just be five stars that are brand new coming. So if you want more to look at those other units, you can check out the 30 minute long video I did. So. With that stuff out of the way, let's actually get into the unit. These units are in no particular order, except for by when they released. I'm not going to actually try and put them in order, um, because that would cause fights. <laughs> so that's not what I'm doing. So first up, we have Kama. There might also be some slight spoilers here, too, if you um, care about the story. I would suggest clicking off the video. That's just the way it's going to have to be. Here we have Kama. She is a um, goddess. Uh, she is also a pseudo-servant of Sakura from specifically, I want to say, Heaven's Feel? It might be Heaven's Feel. I think Parvati is the other Sakura pseudo-servant who is from a different timeline. She starts here in her first ascension as a uh, kid Sakura, and then later on she turns into a more adult. Um, she is also the Beast counterpart to Kiara, which is the who is the other Beast unit that we have, as you can see here, Beast 3. Um... Kiara is her direct counterpart, or the other part of it. It's something story-related. Let's go into what she actually does. First skill, Blessing of the Goddess B reduces one ally's max HP by 1,000 permanently, and, and also overcharges their NP by one stage for one turn, three turns, recovers own HP at level 10 is 4,000. Second skill, Inaga Ranga EX grants self-gut stats for one turn, increases own attack for three turns, at skill level 10, she revives with 2,000 HP, and attack is 30%, and has a 6 cooldown. Which isn't bad for a skill that gives guts. And finally, we have Mara Parthas EX, charges on an NP gauge, grants self-attack and defense advantage against Alter Ego class for 3 turns, deals 2 times damage against them, and takes 0.5% damage from them, increases on critical damage by 20% for 3 turns, and reduces all enemies' charm debuff resistance for 1 turn. And NP is at 50% level 10 and 40% down to charm resistance. Also, she has a, a specific card build of quick, quick, arts, buster, buster. Um, passive skill, magic resistance A increases own debuff resistance by 20%. Writing A increases own quick performance by 10%. Independent manifestation increases own critical damage by 6%. Um... Increases own mental debuff resistance by 6%, and Essence of the Goddess of Love, rank B, increases own damage by 225, and grants self-charm debuff immunity. And her Noble Phantasm is an anti-unit, single target, um... <sighs> effect is, deals damage to one enemy, and has an 80% chance to charm them for one turn. Also, the Overcharge effect increases own quick performance for three turns. 
And this can stack, obviously, because if you keep doing it, then it'll keep doing it. And this hits 10 times. And the overcharge effect is 20% up to quick. So Kama, why is she so insanely good? Um, she's a single target assassin. Up until this point, the best single target assassin has been King Asan. Um, and I would say she probably surpasses him in some ways. Uh, the reason is, is that she's able to just insanely loop um, because of her specific quick card. If you hit with specifically this quick card, which hits 10 times, give her a double Scotty buff, um, and then also combine that with her quick stuff right here. Like, there's so much synergy to be going on with everything she does that it's actually very easy for her to get her MP back. Even if you somehow don't get a full 100%, her skill 3 gives her 50% MP. Um, and not only that, she causes charm. Charm is an extremely good um, effect to give. The reason that the charm lock strategy has worked for St Steno for so long is because charm is basically a free stun. Um, some units can obviously uh, be resistant to it, such as Kama, for example. If you fight a Kama, you can't hit her with a charm. Um, but it's super easy to keep people in a permanent state of stun if you just constantly charm them. And the way she's built, she's very easy to just constantly charm dudes. Um, so she ends up being insanely good. It doesn't even matter that assassins, I think, deal slightly less damage than other classes. Um, because she's just built so strong and she works so well with Scotty as well. Um, so that's one unit to kind of keep a look on. She's insanely good. Um, I'm definitely going to be pulling for her. Uh, basically, all the units here, I'm not going to have to say this again, I am going to be pulling because they are too good to ignore. Uh, next person who releases right after is Arjuna Alter. Um, Arjuna Alter is Arjuna, the archer, but insanely good. And he is basically the berserker that replaces uh, Raiko for best berserker in the game in terms of farming and everything else. Oh, man. And his uh, card build is quick, arts, and three busters. <laughs> Get ready for this. His active skills are um, dumb. His active skill is anti-evil unique EX. Increases his own attack for three turns. Increases his own damage against enemies with debuff for three turns. Except unremovable de debuff. 30% attack for himself and debuff damage of 50% at level 5. Mm -hmm. Clairvoyance Transcendental EX. Increases his own crit star absorption of buster cards for three turns. And charges his... Charges his NP gauge. His, bups, his buster absorption is 6,000%, 6, and his NP is increased by 30%, cooldown of 5. Lamplight of the Soul EX. Grants self gut status for 1 turn, 3 turns. And recovers own HP every turn for 3 turns. 2,000 HP, 2,000 regen. Um, his passive skill are Mad Enhancement which increases his own buster performance by 12%, and Divinity EX, which increases his own damage by 250. Um, if you're wondering how this specific works, like if you were to deal 100 damage, it would deal 250 extra, so it would be 350. That's basically it. It's like um, adding on top of. At least that's how I understand it. For each hit, I think, is how it works. Um, you can correct me if I'm wrong on that one, but I'm pretty sure that's how it works. And this is his Noble Phantasm. It is a Buster Noble Phantasm. Five hits. Deals damage to all enemies at MP level one. Uh, it deals 300% damage. And its overcharge effect is reduce their debuff resistance for three turns, 20%. Now, why is he so crazy nutty? It's because of this thing right here. It's a lot of reasons. It's one, he gives a Buster resistance. So their Buster resistance means they take more damage from Buster. Um, that, if this wasn't enough already, his skill 1 also gives him more damage when he hits someone with a debuff. Um, and he's also Berserker, which can go through a whole buttload of units for grinding sakes. For example, if you want to know how good he is, because this is someone I've used on the JP side of the game, I was able to beat, with units not even leveled up, basically the entire singularities with one Arjuna Altar friend. Because they were just so stupid strong that not even the bosses could really handle them. Um, he also has a the added benefit of also having a Guts, which is absolutely needed in modern story stages for Berserkers. Because Berserkers die basically in one hit. Having a Guts is pretty good. This isn't the greatest Guts in the world, but it's good enough um, 
for what he needs, I guess, specifically. So he is, he is very good. Um, amazing. And that is also not counting the fact that he can also get this, this, the, the crit star absorption for specifically only his buster cards. So if he had, for example, um, all five of his cards out there and they were all split between crit, uh, all, all split between all five of them, um, using that skill would automatically make it so all the crit stars would immediately go to his busters and none of them will go to the quick in the arts and that's because the absorption rate for berserkers is super low. Um, that's just one example. But even at 6,000, that would be almost able to stop writers from stealing your crit stars. It basically guarantees him the worst the worst class in terms of star absorption. It guarantees that he will get those, uh, those crit stars that are needed for him. Um, that's unit two. Unit three, Leonardo da Vinci Rider. Now, I actually kind of debated putting either Summer Musashi on this or um, Summer Artoria, uh, the Rider, Lancer, Ruler. I <laughs> I forget her full title. title. Um, I decided to go with Leonardo because I feel I don't need to tell you to summon for female swimsuit units. You're going to be doing it anyway, so not a lot of people probably know about Leonardo da Vinci Rider, so I wanted to specifically uh, talk about her. So her card build is one quick, two arts, two busters. Uh, her active skills are, oh man, first one, Golden Rule Body EX, grants self debuff immunity for three turns, recovers own HP every turn for three turns, charges own MP gauge for every turn for three turns, she gains a thousand and gets 20% MP regen at that level. Uh, Excel turn, this is her second skill. Grants self evasion for one attack. Increases on crit damage for one turn. 50% crit damage. Not, you know, respectable for a, um, a one turn evade. It's not even one turn evade, it's one attack evade, so, you know. The evade could be better, is what I'm saying. But it could, in potential, if she does not get attacked, she keeps this. So, it's as soon as she's attacked, that's when she loses it. Um. There are positives and negatives between the two types of... Between one turn and one attack, you know. For example, Ku has three attacks, and that's amazing. Um, and her final skill is Dream Upon the Stars, D. Increases party MP damage for three turns. Charges party's MP gauge by 10%. And overcharges the entire party's MP by one stage for one turn. MP damage is 30%. So I didn't talk about this, because I knew I was going to talk about it when we got to Da Vinci. What is overcharge? So, this right here, as you can see at the bottom of the NP, is overcharge. This is charge 1. So if you have 100% NP, you will always do 20%. And some units can only really get charge of 100% if they're NP1. Now, if you are NP1 and you have an overcharge, if Da Vinci gives you an overcharge of an NP for one stage, then even though you only have 100%, it is treated as if you have 200%. So you get that added bonus instead. So that's basically what it does. So let's continue on with, uh, go back to our passive skills. Uh, Riding B increases on quick performance by 8%. Ter territory creation C increases on arts performance by 6%. And overhaul E increases on debuff resistance by 20% and increases on crit star generation rate by 20%. And our noble phantasm is an anti-barrier, three hit AOE, deals damage to all enemies and charges NP gauge by 20% when she uses the NP. So if you want to add that all together, she use, and also um, the overcharge effect is increases own arch performance for one turn. This is why I love this card specifically, and I have her on JP so I can attest to this. She gives the entire party 10%. And then when she uses her own NP, which is insanely strong, um, it gets helped a whole bunch by this art performance for one turn. That helps a whole bunch, along with... Um, some of the other effects that she has around here. Um, she gets... <laughs> so she gets to charge everyone's NP by 20%. So that's 30%. And then also her own ability gives her 20% every turn. So regardless of anything, if you were to use all three skills here... Okay, let's say you were to use her Noble Phantasm and Arts. It hits everyone. Because it is Arts, she's getting NP back for how much damage she deals from the... Not damage, but she gets NP back for this. But that's not included with the 20% she gets back from this. And then her next turn, she gets an overcharge. She can overcharge NP. She increases NP. She can increase her own MP by 20%. For example, to give an example, 
Dantes can get about three to four percent NP back when he uses his um, stuff because of his Avengers, and that's that little tiny percentage of three to four percent is enough to mean can he loop that turn or not. What Da Vinci is doing here is basically guaranteeing that she is the easiest looper in the history of the world. And she allows you to use um, other kind of craft essences as well that are made, like say like you're a, um, a master who doesn't have a full-on um, kaleidoscope, max on limit broken. So you only have 80%. Um, you can have Da Vinci do her Noble Phantasm and then now it's at 100%. And then you can keep on doing this weird loop over and over again. It's it's really great. And the reason that she, the funny thing is, is that she's insanely good. The reason she didn't get more attention when she got released, she got a decent amount of uh, attention, but nobody realized how crazy she was until this girl came out. Castoria, who is the unit we are gonna, is the number one unit for 2022, whenever North America reaches it, because she is the next um, meta lead. She is the arts meta. Um, one moment. Sorry, I thought someone came home, but they didn't. So the combination of this unit with uh, Da Vinci, it's basically like future proofing for the future, which is why I was kind of split between Le talking about Leonardo or Musashi. Uh, Summer Musashi sits in a very similar plane where Summer Musashi is similar to like Lancelot, where Lancelot is kind of the berserker heavy farmer for his meta. Musashi is the same for him. Um, Leonardo da Vinci, I just feel like I felt like talking about because she offers a little bit more, I guess, wiggle room for you to play with. It's not as pigeonholed as something like Quick, I would say. There's a lot more fun to be had with Servant variety is what I'll say. Because that's kind of what I've been liking about her on my JP side of the game is that I'm actually able to run with a whole bunch of other teams and maybe not even double Castoria if I feel like it. So, something to take note of. Next, Space Ishtar. Um, let's get into it. She is an Avenger class. She has one quick card, two arts cards, two busters. She is a Rin. Um, similar, to, she's like Ishtar, but in space. I'm, ser the Servant first, it's a whole thing. Uh, her active skills are Devil Sugar. Increases on attack for three turns. Increases party attack, except for herself, for three turns. Uh, and she grants party charm debuff immunity, except herself, for three turns. The attack plus is 20% and everyone else gets 30%. Venus Driver B increases on NP damage for one turn, three turns. Grants self invincibility for one attack, three turns. And the final one. Select own NP command card type between Quick, Arts, and Buster for three turns. That's right. She can change her NP value for three entire turns from Arts, Buster, or Quick, whatever you want. And it does actually do different damage depending on what style you use. Because as you can see here, Arts is 1.1. It deals 450% damage at MP1. Buster is 1.5, but it deals less overall damage. It does 300% instead. And it's 100% doing that because it doesn't want to um, make one seem more strong than the other. Basically, if... If Buster had all of these, it would be kind of crazy. And then Quick is 600% because its base damage is 0.8%. Um, so it needs a little bit more damage to be on par with the others. Okay. And our third skill is multiple starting EX, charges on NP gauge, 80% chance to increase on Quick performance for three, for, uh, by 20% for three turns. And it's the same for Arts and Buster. Um, so you can kind of use this skill and then use the second skill. So if you, for example, didn't get the quick or the arts or the buster increase, if you, <laughs> well, if you didn't get all three of them, then you're kind of screwed. <laughs> but that's the that's the game you play. Um, it can kind of be worked together to kind of move off of the bat. The, the, if you miss with one of these skills, you can at least change the MP is what I'm trying to say here. And the MP charge is also at 50%. Her passive skills hold on to your butts. Magic resistance C increases on debuff resistance by 15%. Independent action C increases on crit damage by 6%. Goddess Census A++ increases on damage to 70, increases on debuff resistance by 20%, 27%. Avenger EX increases on party's generation rate when taking damage by 22%, reduces party including sub-members debuff resistance by 12%, except for herself. 
Oblivion Correction increases zone crit damage by 10% and Self Replenishment Magic charges own MP gauge by 3.5% every turn. And then her NP, as I said, split between three arts, buster, and quick, but its default is arts. It deals damage to all enemies and increases own damage of the extra attack by 100% for one turn. Um, and her overcharge effect is increases own MP damage for three turns. So why is she so good? If that wasn't enough, she can literally be used with Scotty if you want to. If you want to use her with Castoria, which is coming the next year, she can 100% do that. Hell, if you just want to use her with Merlin, you could do that. She could literally go with anyone you want. <laughs> she is so versatile to whatever style of gameplay you want to play that it's kind of nuts that she has this. The only other unit that has the ability, as of this video, to switch NP is Emiya, and he only does it for one turn. She does it for three turns entirely, so. <sighs> Insanely good. 100% worth summoning for. This is the reason why we don't have Halloween anymore, but they replaced her with an extremely good unit. So, final unit, the fifth and final one, Super Orion. Why is he so insanely good? Why is Super Orion, of all people, so insanely good? The reason is, is that he is a... Well, let me actually get to see what he does first. Tell you what he does. So, he's built a little weird, but let me tell you right now. So he has one quick card, one arts card, and three busters. So that yeah, makes you think, oh, he's a buster unit. Kind of. His active skill are, uh, skills are, uh, first skill is Stout Arm of Brutality B+. Increases own buster performance for one turn. Increases own damage against beast or demonic enemies for one turn. Buster up is 50%. Beast or demonic damage up is 50%. Skill 2 is Pressure of the Moon Goddess EX. Grants self gut status for one time, three turns. Increases own attack for three turns. Gain crit, gain crit stars. So he, he, return, he revives with 3000 HP. His own attack is increased by 20%. And he gains 20 crit stars at level 10. And this is a school a cooldown of 6. Not bad. Bowman of the three stars, A+. Increases own crit star absorption for three turns. Grants self on attack activate buff for three, t for three attacks, three turns. Increases own crit damage for one turn when attacking with buster cards activates first. His absorption for all cards is 500%, and his crit damage increase is 100%. <laughs> oh, man. And his passive skills are Independent Action EX increases on crit damage by 12%, Blessing from Poseidon B um, increases own damage by 175 and reduces own damage taken by 175, and Cur Curse of the Scorpio D grants self toxic status, it's a demerit, increases poison damage on self by 20%. His Noble Phantasm is Artemis' Agnes. It is a anti-army, he applies it to himself, only himself. He ignores invincibility for three turns. He increases his own attack for three turns. He grants himself debuff immunity for three turns. And he gains 10 crit stars every turn. And at MP level 1 is 30% attack to him. And he also increases his own crit damage for three turns. 100%! And as we can see up here, let me see how much crit damage of... That's 200% crit that he's doing. And his Noble Phantasm is arts because the only reason I can assume is because if he was Buster, he would literally invalidate so many things. This man is built so incredibly dumb. Why is he so good? The reason is, is that he is a Grand Servant, similar to King Asan. If you remember King Asan, he is the assassin that I literally talked about with Kama. Um, Grand Servants are supposed to be the absolute... To kind of explain it without going too deep into it, they're supposed to be basically the best of their class. Now, multiple people can fit into multiple grand um, grand roles. For example, um, Solomon in the story is the grand caster, but also Merlin and potentially Big Gilgamesh caster could potentially have been a uh, grand servant if they so wanted to, or something like that. For archer, for the archer class, it is Super Orion. He is also the little bear that is with Artemis. Um, there's an Orion card, and it's technically also an Artemis because Artemis replaces him with a tiny bear. This is his actual form. It's super big. It's super strong. He's super built dumb. In terms of single content, hell, if you wanted to just actually kill everyone with him, that was also possible. He is another unit similar to Arjuna Altar that when I used him against certain bosses, it felt like I was cheating. 
There was just no way that you can 100% understand how good this guy is until you see him in action. He is insane. And with that, those are kind of the five units I wanted, I wanted to highlight for this video. Not that I necessarily think they're the absolute... Hmm, they're probably the absolute best. You can actually argue it. Um, I don't want to cause any actual arguments, though, so if you disagree with me, it's fine. But I want to say for at least looking at Servant Way, it's good to keep your eyes on these servants if you're going to try and summon for some of them. Um, if there was any that I would say, oh, you should absolutely get, it would probably be Spacious Star or Leonardo da Vinci Rider. Arjuna Alt... Oh, they're all too good. Let me put it this way. all The fact that I'm looking at all of them and going, oh, wait, no, 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 says to me that they're all top tier servants in my eyes. So before we end the video, I did kind of want to talk to, not talk to, bring up some of the other servants other people mentioned. Because I did ask other people how they felt and we'll see how they feel. Because like I said, there's a lot of units that come out this year that are <laughs> popular and loved. And it's not always about attack, so let's actually look at them real quick. So this is what we got when I asked on YouTube. This man over here, Farah, is waiting for Kama, Space Ishtar. Akita Soju, who is the assassin for a swimsuit. Perfection is looking forward to Arjuna Altar. And Summer Musashi. Um, but yeah, he feels like this year is nothing but crazy releases. I 100% agree. Um, we got EA575. Um, who says, comma, Spacious Star, Reigns, Austria, and Super Orion. Uh, now, unfortunately, I cannot scroll down any further, so I will just mention these dudes' names. We have Danox215, who says, Actually, I play both servers, but in 2021 for North America, the servants I'm looking for the most are Ko Quetzalcoatl and Musar Murasaki on Valentine's Day, Day um, banner. We got Simai Ye, who is Reigns, who is the collab unit. Arjuna Alter, Musashi Berserker. Carmilla Ryder. Okita Soju Assassin, Kama Assassin, and Space Star. All right. Welp Welp is saying Luvia and Saber Ostolfo. I didn't even get to mention Ostolfo. Like I said, a lot of popular characters. And Peak 3 Hadikoko Gummer says Kama Chan. And now over to the Twitter side of things, we have uh, Foxy, who is saying Space Star, Mew, and Da Vinci Rider, because they're cute. Um, and Space Star is for future proofing with Castoria. Literally, if you. If there's only one art servants that you want to try and get this year to potentially go alongside Castoria, it would be say Space Ishtar. That's just the way it is. Next we got Soul Rock, who says summon wise, just Da Vinci Rider and Miyu. Uh, gotta go get an actually good <laughs> day, Da Vinci, and she can loop too. And Miyu is my daughter, and I refuse to diffuse to a Fujino situation, so. Miyu is the unit I mentioned in the beginning. Fujino has never returned to the game, and Miyu is in the exact same boat. You only have one shot at Miyu at this current moment. So if you love Prisma Star Ilya, or you love this girl through the story event itself, that is your one chance of getting Miyu. Just something to remember. And he also hopes to get Reigns or King Protea from the GSSR this year, which is a good, good go. Next we got Dr. Planet, who says Murasaki, Kama, Arjuna Alter, Ashkawat with the Hama, who is the four star that comes with, I believe, um, Jinako, who is the other person he mentioned. Summer Lantoria, Bunny Stolfo, and Orion, Super Orion. We got Me Too, who says Arjuna Alter, comma, Orion. Man of simple words, but he's going for it. Jorge Diaz, who says Musashi or Astera. I hope to get Artoria next year. My main man, Mr. Iyabuti, says only the ones that come with free quartz. I respect it. We got Young Synchron. Who says probably just Calamity Jane so I can get some stuff for her, really. She is the one who comes. Calamity Jane is the four star that comes with Space Ishtar. Old Man Lee would be cool too, um, but he feels like he's already blew his good luck this year. Um, my boy Lucifer Valley said the bandaged soccer face, she looks cute. He's a big fan of the soccer faces. That is King Protea, and he is right, she is cute. We got Remix175, who says the top servants that I am looking forward to are Arjuna Alter, comma, Super Orion. Arjuna Alter because he is on the best farming berserkers with that Buster Resist down. Kama because she is a great single target assassin. And Orion because crits go burr. And next we have, this is Alex, who says Arjuna Alter for gameplay reasons and then Demon King Nobu for want, wanted her since she arrived on JP regardless of her kit. That is one of the units I mentioned who is extremely popular but some people feel like her kit is lacking. I'm on the side of I think she's very cool. So that's how I feel about her. Um, but I do take reference that she is a little bit underwhelming damage size. She 
could use a buff, and I wish they would buff her for all the fans of uh, my girl Avenger out there. <sighs> Rhaegar, who says, My top are Arjuna, Alter King, Protea, Kama, and Super Orion. Arjuna and Super Orion because they bunk everything, and Kama because I want to test some single target looping with her, and King Protea because I want to test a few teams to see how much HP I can stack with her. And then we got Ruben Luker, who says, Arjuna, Alter, and Avenger Nobu are the top two I'm most excited for. And finally, Jordan says, Nobu, because she is queen. And he is right about that one. She is, in fact, a queen. So that's the end of today's video, everyone. I hope you liked it. This video ended up being just as long as the last one. So if you made it this far, do me a favor and hit a like, comment, tell me how you feel. Subscribe to me if you want some more fake Grand Order stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next video. You guys have a good night and goodbye. Bye-bye.